Check your mouths, find your chairs, and get set for Halo 3 ODST 100% Badass Edition. Hello everybody, this is JP3 here introducing a brand new series on the channel. We're doing Halo 3 ODST 100% Badass Edition. I hope you like that intro. I, I really am just extremely excited to do ODST. I think ODST benefited tremendously, tremendously, from the developers having a second shot at this engine. Uh, whether it's the art design, whether it's the tweaks here and there, I think this is probably the finest that Halo has ever got with respect to its gameplay. So let's get started with the first level, Teari Plaza. Probably not my favorite mission in ODST. Most of the missions are small. This one's really small. More like a kind of a, I don't know, playable interactive story or something or another. But, you know, I decided that as much as I could muster it, I was not going to shrink back into the shadows when I played this. I was going to, you know, give it, you know, give it all I had. I mean, you know, I was going to take cover and things like that, but uh was definitely going to try to... Maybe, I don't know where that guy came from. <laughs> he just... He was hiding somewhere, and he was just almost always out of my field of vision there. It was uh, hilarious, and then all of a sudden, boom, there he is. They're hanging out uh, somewhere over there in the shadows. Not quite, probably, but anyway. <clears throat> So as you go through here in this first part, you face off against a lot of grunts. But the brutes that hang around here can be quite dangerous. The weapons can be various, so uh, you have to be pretty careful. I'm, I'm being kind of careful here. I'm trying to uh, bob and weave and duck dive and dodge. Uh, we got a brute shot here, but we were able to get off the overcharge. We gave him a skull hole just for the uh, just for the fun of it. All right. So once you're done with this uh, big group, what I like to usually do is find as many grenades as possible. A fresh plasma pistol would be preferred. I think I passed up a fresher one just a minute ago, but that's how it goes. There we go. I think we're full on plasmas, full on spikes. I'm just gonna call them spikes from here on out instead of spike grenades. So I ignore that uh, guy because this is legendary and it's badass, and I want to do this as quickly as possible. That's right. One, two, three, baby. Right in the face. Gotta love it. So there's a handful more of grunts over here. And then, of course, there's this guy with the brute shot who I was prepared for. He was, again, kind of playing some uh, games on me there. I couldn't find him. Eventually did. Gave him the what for. So we got a carbine brute back there. And, uh... That means he can hit us from quite far away with quite and uh, a quite a powerful weapon on legendary difficulty when you're just a lowly ODST. But sometimes you can get that thing to track from far in Halo 3. And even though I'm hurting, let my uh, fatigue recover and watch this guy do uh, some sort of a uh, strange uh, brute hop. There we go. Yeah, that little dot, I'm not so sure what it means. I know it's supposed to indicate headshot, but uh doesn't tend to do the best job of that. Uh, I was just hoping to get him off that turret and then blow up the energy box. For some reason or another, when he's on the turret, uh, on Legendary at least, the energy box doesn't seem to affect him nearly as much. From what I recall, at least. I think that's why I did that. I played this... Uh, little ways back a handful of months ago so there's a jackal sniper right there you can take one sniper hit as an ODST first 
Halo game where that was possible. Oddly enough, you do not have Molnir armor or a shield. But again, like I was saying in the early goings, I think that um, some of the tweaks to gameplay probably again come from this being the only Halo that was made after the engine, after, you know, they'd already had a go of it uh, with Halo 3. And I, if you watch my Halo 3 series, you know I have some qualms with the uh, gameplay. They have mainly surround vehicles and how you use those. Uh, there's some improvements with that in ODST. I think in uh, ODST, I think your damage resistance with vehicles is still a little low when they're, you know, for example, hitting your bumper or something like that. Shouldn't really be causing you damage, but uh, I think the uh, one of the biggest tweaks I've noticed is that it doesn't seem like uh, the guys on the turrets are quite as able to follow you whenever you're going at max speed, and I think they sped up the Warthog, or at least maybe its starting speed is uh, more quickly reached. So right now I'm kind of, uh, I think the issue here is probably more of a rust factor, uh, just trying to get back into the groove of using this pistol, this being the first mission and all. So I'm not as deadly with it perhaps as I would have been at a later time, or maybe at a later time in this series. I'm not a big proponent of rolling with the pistol whenever you can go with something else in this uh, game, but not complaining by any means about its uh, effectiveness. So I come up here and grab that beam rifle, and then I want to grab, if at all possible, some carbine, but as it turns out, there was a grunt hiding out over here. So I had to take care of him before I opened the door. So first thing I like to do is try to snipe some of these jackal marksmen and snipers. Hard to distinguish unless you remember which ones are the marksmen and or the snipers because they both have that kind of blue light. I got greedy and decided to take this brood out, but I got to admit the best thing to do is to try to get these snipers first. There's a sniper over there. If I can just get some red... Yeah. There we go. Eh. I likes me some that. So carbine over here. Trooper, we're pinned down. Cut through this building. Hit him from behind. I I don't think cutting through the building's the best idea on legendary Back. difficulty Location. as oh, I yeah. cut through Move the forward. building. I think uh, flanking them from behind maybe is my biggest uh, concern here. So I want to try to get that sniper right there, and then we'll be sniper free for the remainder of the mission. So yeah, I guess it was wise for that one particular part. Now it's just time to try and work the headshot capability of this carbine on these jackals and grunts. While also, I guess, avoiding the uh, spamming of the carbine by that golden brute there. Golden armored brute. That's not his official rank. Oh, we got an armorless brute there, so we put him down. There we go. Now we're starting to get the two shot down with those jackals. Now let's see if we can take care of these grunts. Oh, we made him flip end over end. Just like a football. And, oh, we've got two brutes with... Plasma rifles that appear as if they're more interested right now in the uh, troopers over there, but uh, now they're no not interested in anything anymore. If uh, unless you can feel interest in the uh, on the great journey, this guy definitely needs to be taken care of. Oh, we got a jackal that remains. He uh, almost sizzled us with that bolt, and then someone. I don't know, man. These guys are popping out of the woodwork. Uh, that was supposed to work. That worked. 
it worked well enough. So we're going to go up in this building here and we're going to grab that Jackal's beam rifle. Because this one is empty as you can see. We should also, yes, we should have, we have a health there. Which helps us. Oh, boy, I was wrong. This guy had a carbine. That's not what I was hoping for. Got to skedaddle. Because the hunters made it here a little bit earlier than I thought. There's the beam rifle. That's what I was looking for. Notice there were two spike grenades there, although you may not need them. I'm throwing grenades like I'm playing another game just then, so uh, it did not quite work. That is the one tweak that I guess I really, really don't understand. I mean, I could... I guess an argue, argument could be made, but I don't know why they changed the grenade throwing motion ever. It should have stayed the way it was in Halo Combat Evolved and or Halo 2 for the remainder of the series and to this day. They made a handful of uh, little tweaks and changes, so it did qu feel quite different in uh, Halo 3. But in ODST, these guys just flat out can't throw them far. They tend to lob them in a very uh, strange fashion. And, um, since I'm doing a no-skip run, I've got to take care of these guys. So let's see if we can snipe this guy in the back. Yes. And then here comes, uh, his Bond brother, who I'm sure is dissatisfied with the recent turn of events there. So we've got four stickies. we got a sniper and a shotgun. Let's see if we can, uh, make relatively quick work of him. Yeah, getting used to the lob for ODST is a little odd. It's a little strange. There's really nothing like it. I'd say the biggest... Uh... <laughs> yeah, there we go. The biggest uh, change uh, from that point, honestly, was probably Halo 3 slash ODST to reach. Uh, and then from there on, it seems like the grenades throw kind of the same for H4 and H5. But there was a big difference in reach. They seem to be much harder to direct and of course their power was nerfed massively uh, the amount you could hold was nerfed massively just everything was nerfed massively uh, when it comes to grenades and halo reach but here we're still dealing with the uh, with the halo 3 engine which you know grenades were all right they they weren't too bad probably well balanced between uh, what you see in reach and going forward versus combat evolves mini nukes so if we can just get in the right position to get this pod open and we're done with Teari Plaza. 11 minutes, 46 seconds. No deaths, of course. So next up, we'll do Uplift Reserve. I hope you guys enjoy the remainder of this series. Uh, please subscribe and hit that notifications bell if you haven't already. Uh, definitely important to hit the notifications bell. That'll alert you to when new videos are released. Uh, leave comments in the comments section about what you think of this series thus far about the form performances heck you can talk about whatever you want really uh, just you know keep it on the safe side i guess nothing political nothing religious and so forth nothing that starts an argument or a flame war but as for now this is jp3 signing out have a wonderful wonderful day and thank you very 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 much for watching goodbye